Hello guys, this is Rupesh and I'm watching CPNet's video series on C++ and this topic is about this unary operator overloading in C++. So before watching this video, if you don't know what is operator overloading, I would strongly recommend please go ahead and watch my previous video which is about introduction of the operator overloading and you will be getting this link somewhere here I guess and if you're not then you will go to the description field of this video you'll get it and there I have explained why you should use operator overloading and simple example of binary operator overloading so binary means a plus b unity means plus a or plus b or maybe this okay so the difference is in binary operators you have two operands this is one operand this is another operand but in unary you only have only one operands and in that video I have explained that how this basic thing work like adding one object with another and assigning it into something else and how the calling happens. So if you don't know all these things please go ahead and watch that one it will be very beneficial for you and then you come back and watch this one. So I hope you have watched that so let's start this. So the point says that operator overloading works with classes and the structures means user defined data types. You cannot change the behavior of this positive and this negative and all that if the data type is integer, float, character because these are implicit data types and you cannot change the meaning for these kind of data types. Okay, but if it is object then you can change the behavior of this operator here that we'll see in the moment. So let's cover this theory part first and the unary operator overloading needs only one operand and that we have discussed here. Correct? So let's go ahead and check how to overload the unary operators. And yeah, before going there, let's have some requirement. So the requirement is you have 2D plane. This example is taken from the previous video. So if you have watched it, you will be understanding it better. And you have some points. So like P1, P2 and P3. Okay, so these are the coordinates 1, 1 and then 2, 2. So this is user defined data type you will not get this data type in the compiler like integer float and character so we have to create this data type so let's go ahead and do that so first I'll create one class and let's create a point and hit this semicolon and we need two points so integer x and integer y and need a constructor so let's do this and we will make this constructor parameterize as well as default one so integer y is equal to zero and let's initialize this x with x comma y with y and we are done with this constructor and it should be in public so let's do that and we will be needing one print function which will print whatever is there with this points value so let's do this c out x space y and done so this printing is done and we can go ahead and create this point p1 and initialize with 1 comma 2 and let's create this p2 and don't do anything with that so this code is not doing anything just creating a p1 with value 1 and 2 so here we will have 1 and 2 and P2 is not initialized with anything, so it's x and y will have 0, 0 value. Okay, so let's check that. P1 dot print and P2 dot print. Let's run that. See, we got this x1 and y2, 0 and 0. So this is correct. So let's check one more thing. What if you want to do one assignment with negative value let's do that point p3 is equal to p1 but with minus here so you want to assign whatever is there with p1 but with the minus value okay and if you will compile this it won't work see it is telling that i don't know what is this minus here so let's give the definition and understanding for this minus so the syntax goes like this as you can see we have this point data type for p3 and p1 is also point data type so we'll be returning this point data type so we will write this point and then this keyword operator and what operator you are overloading minus 
and then this round and curly bracket. So this is the function you will be writing in order to overload this unary minus operator. And you can have this uh, space and you can just delete that space. It doesn't matter. Okay. And inside this function, we will return a temporary object with minus x comma minus y. Okay. And we are done. So if you will compile this, there won't be any issue here. It is telling that P3 is not used. That is okay. We can see that. So we can just simply print P3 now. Let me just do that. P3 dot print. And let's run this again. See, you got this P3. This line number 3 is this P3 value in minus 1 and minus 2. So our code is working. So now understand how it is working. So when you are calling this one, I mean you are writing this one, it will call this function and this P1 is calling this function. That's why this X is of this P1 X and Y is of this P1 Y. And what we're doing is we're just creating a temporary object here and passing that value to the constructor. So the constructor is taking that minus and minus value. And ultimately we are having one temporary object here and we are returning the temporary object. And that is coming here. Okay. And if you have the return value optimization enabled, this temporary object will not be created. It will create on the memory of this P3 itself. But if you don't know what is return value optimization, don't worry about that. You will get it when the time will come. So this is about overloading this unary minus operator. So there are plus minus and then this plus plus, which is this post increment or pre increment operator. And then similarly minus minus operator. So these all operators are unary operator. We'll see these unary operators. I mean this plus plus and minus minus in coming videos because they need little bit of spatial handling. They are not this simple. Actually they are simple, but the point is if you will have plus plus in the right hand side of this operand, which is a, in that case, this is post increment and this has the difference behavior if it has before this a. Okay. So in order to achieve this behavior, we have to do something else. So I don't want to club that into this video. That's why I have created that another video. So if you want to know how to overload this plus plus post and minus, sorry, this pre increment and post increment. And similarly for minus minus, then go ahead and watch that video. You might be getting the link here somewhere. And if you are not getting it, you'll get it in the description field. So we'll keep this video till this much. And if you have any doubt, please comment. I'll be very happy to explain you that. Okay. So thanks for watching. Bye bye. Oh, 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 oh,